The other night at the dinner table, my boy looks at me, square in the eyes, and utters those four words every father waits to hear, and every mother dreads. He said, Dad, I need a sword. A what? A sword. A sword? Barely managing to hold back the tears, in a stern fatherly voice I asked, now what on God's green earth would you need a sword for? He looked at me like I'd just asked who the better Bond was, Sean Connery or Pierce Brosnan. The answer was obvious, and we both knew it. I agreed, and I told him Saturday morning we'd dig through the woodpile and forge his first sword. He didn't like that. Apparently all the other kids' fathers had made them swords. And he's got his first duel on Saturday. There just wasn't time. I pushed the plates onto the floor, stood on the kitchen table and said, snot-eating boy of mine, maker of fart jokes, heir to all the junk in the garage, I accept your challenge. Ye shall have your sword. Now finish your dinner. Like any self-respecting father would do in the face of such dilemma, I went out and I spent $20 on wood, where an old broken broomstick and some electrical tape would have more than sufficed. Now if he were here, we'd do this the old-fashioned way. But since he's not, and I've got a CNC router, I'm taking the easy way out. The first thing I needed was a riser for the router table. I'd been putting this off for a while, and really only just threw something together, sort of a mock-up, to see how it would work out. Though odds are it's the first and probably the last one I ever make. So the question now is, what sword? I mean sword. Now I don't know about you, but the first one that came to mind is He-Man's power sword. A close second might be the Sword of Omens. Then there's Inigo Montoyo's sword, but I don't think that's quite right for the occasion. Anyway, after 15 seconds of thinking about it, I decided to go with a simple short sword. I'm going short sword for one, a combination, or all of the following reasons. First, if the sword is way too cool, he'll end up being that kid. I wouldn't want him to be that kid. Second, I don't want to do a lot of complicated CAD. And third, he'll likely break it in the first 10 minutes flat. I didn't show you this, but there is an aluminum tube attached under the riser box. Once tightened in the vise, it holds the box in place. I expected to have to add a few screws around the perimeter, but for now, it's surprisingly solid. I'll be working on top of the riser, of course, using it as a sacrificial base. Here you can just see three of the six screws holding the riser and the aluminum tube. It's also epoxied. The sword needs work from both sides, and so I located the wood blank with three dowels and the holes for the dowels were drilled with the router itself. If I had needed higher precision, I might have drilled the dowels clean through the stock and into the riser. Two screws initially hold the stock down, one at each end, but they're dangerously close to my tool paths, and I end up moving them to the corners. I did plan to skim cut the top of the riser, but it turned out to be reasonably flat and level. I'll be using a 3 8 inch ball nose router bit, that's about 10 millimeter. Both sides use the same tool paths, two parallel finishing passes, one each in X and Y with about an eighth of an inch step over. I'm running at about 50 inches per minute. I think that's 1200 millimeters. Each side took roughly 15, maybe 20 minutes. Flipping the work over is always scary, and this is why the dowels are there. Though I'm always worried I might flip it like in the wrong direction, and end up with a handle where the tip of a sword should have been.
And finally, the last toolpath is a 2D contour with a few tabs left here and there to keep the part in place. In hindsight, I should have used a smaller step over to save some sanding. But a little cleanup with some 220 paper is all it's going to get. There's still some tool marks visible, but it'll be fine. It's a serrated sword. It'll work a lot better for killing loaves of bread. I still don't know if I'll use any finish, but here's what the wood looks like wetted down a bit. In addition to the sword itself, I made a few other pieces. A guard, a handle made in two parts, and the sheath, a scabbard, also made in two parts. The routing for these was identical to what you saw for the sword. In one half of the scabbard, I included a small detent, a spring finger. It's meant to snap past that small rib in the sword to help keep it in place so he doesn't lose it while he's swinging on vines or climbing pirate ship masts. The guard just slips onto the sword. There's a small pocket on the sword side to hopefully give me some more glue area, and the halves of the handle will clamshell together. This is the weakest area of the sword, and I'm hoping all the wood and glue keep it in one piece. If I had a thick enough plank to start with, I would have likely routed the whole sword, guard, and handle as one piece. The only downside to that is the wood grain would have been going the wrong direction for the guard. Hey, this is a technical video, right? This would be sacrilege in a real scabbard, but in my case, the sword bottoms out at the tip before the guard reaches the top, so as to not create a pinch point when sheathing the sword. I've left about an eighth of an inch gap. More would have probably been better. Maybe I'll cut in a little bit more before I'm through. Now it's just a matter of getting through a bit of cleanup and gluing the parts together. Something funny happened with the scabbard halves. Not ha-ha funny, but I didn't quite care enough to look into why it happened. The two sets of tool paths that created the inside and the outside aren't quite centered, like they're not aligned. Here you can see the glue joints a bit wider on one side than it is on the other. Since both parts show essentially the same error, I must have done something wrong in the cam. I got lucky and I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth here. But I've still got plenty of space to work with, so together it goes. You know what would have been smart and easy to do? Mill a lap joint between the two halves to give me solid alignment and create a bit of a glue dam to keep the squeeze out from making its way inside. But here's a little trick Hattori Hanzo taught me back in 16th century Japan. Just wipe the inside glue line with your finger. Eh, it should be fine. Now I just need to leave the parts to set, the glue to dry. They'll need some cleanup after that, some sanding, but I think it's looking more or less pretty all right. Once sanded and assembled, my detent was a little too light. I gave it a bit of preload from the outside and wrapped it with an old shoelace. The lace also gave me a spot to tie the belt onto. Up until now, I wasn't quite sure how I'd attach it. The webbing and leather are from an old tattered welding apron. So that's it. Sword forged. Round one, fight. Huh? 
you lose.